Welcome to New Mexico Black Rifle Operators Union. I'm your host, Sean. So, if you haven't heard and you live in Illinois, um, there's been a, a rifle, a gun ban there. There was an assault weapons ban that was put into Illinois. Um, there was then later on, there was a stay of, uh, stay of this, in, an injunction. That's what it's, I was looking for the word. An injunction as to stopping this from going into place. Well, as of yesterday, this was repealed. So now, if you're in Illinois, I feel for you because, you know, I have some friends in Illinois. I've been to Illinois a couple times, and it's a pretty cool place. Um, I was only in Chicago, so I didn't, and I was there on business, so I didn't get to carry my gun back when I was working for a school district. But um, I would have felt safer there. That said, where I was at in Chicago was probably in the really rich place of Chicago, so I didn't really get to see anything bad. Um, it was a very beautiful city. It wasn't like the south side of Chicago, which is from my what I've heard is Chirac. Um, but the other places I've been to Illinois in, um, which are a little more farm agrarian type places, they are way more kind of leaning towards my side um i would still say they're a little bit left of where i am but they are more gun friendly and <clears throat> this is really sad because therefore about six or seven days they were able to try to purchase these firearms from like psa or from their local gun stores but now they're in the process of not being able to finish those sales because all those sales were predicated upon uh, this uh, injunction that has now been suspended. So now where does this put this? So in legal parlance, what it will probably happen is this will become a Supreme Court case because the Supreme Court, the seventh, uh, Amy Coney Barrett, the person that's over the seventh uh, district courts, she was the one that helped get that injunction in place. So what are the next steps? If this goes to the Supreme Court, this could be a huge win for the 2A. Um, because following the Heller decision and the Bruin decision, there's new ways that they have to read those laws. And I mentioned those before on this podcast. But this specifically could actually ink that the AR-15 and any of the assault weapon style weapons that they the left likes to deem those could be stopped and cold-hearted and inked as uh, legal, 100%. I'm trying to think of non-prohibited items and never can be, so common use items as they should be. Um, this would be uh, awesome. Now, along with that stuff that's going on with Chevron Defrance, those two things would codify the two-way in such a way that it would take years for the people that are really after guns right now to um, ban normal use rifles. Um, this also has the potential to, with that Chevron Defrance case, would actually have a very good outcome for us when it comes to um, the ATF pistol brace ban and the the, uh, the bump stock ban. That thing has been tried in two different district courts at the Supreme Court level of those those areas. So, you know, before they get to the, the actual big Supreme Court, the ones in those states have found that, that, that you cannot ban this without going through Congress for the bump stock. That sets legal precedence for the pistol brace stuff. Now, again, I don't have one anymore. I got rid of mine a long time ago, but because more so I was looking at turning one of these uh, pistols into a short-barreled rifle anyway. I will do that later. Right now it's just in a pistol form. Um, the idea is that I want one of those – I want to put a regular stock on what I have. So that's why I have got rid of the pistol brace thing because it's kind of an annoying thing, mostly because the government's involved in all that crap. And I want to keep the government as much as I can out of my two-way rights. Um, with that, the, there's one place I probably will um, end up doing that in, and that's – well, it's actually two, but it's for the same gun, is I'm looking at buying a suppressor down the road for 
my MP5. Now my MP5, I would really like to have a normal stock on it, uh, more so because I'm trying to recreate like an 80s or a 90s style SWAT gun because I liked those back in the day, and that was one of the one of my dream guns was to have something like that. Um, the one specifically I'd like to have is an integrally suppressed uh, nine millimeter, but I don't think you can do that or an MP5. I don't think you can do that without buying an integrally into integrally suppressed one already, and then getting all the paperwork involved with that. And I didn't bother to do that because I like the regular SWAT looking one which is a full-size MP5 without, like, the stupid 16-inch barrel. So we have some bad news on that front in Illinois, and it makes me worry because I live in New Mexico, and this type of thing is what we were looking at this last session. You know, with all the gun stuff that's going on, our governor has repeatedly threatened a special session just to go after firearms. Now, if she enters into a special session... Um, there's more than likely going to be other issues that occupy her that they're unresolved, uh, specifically around crime. Um, she vetoed a crime bill um, that was passed by both the House and the Senate. Um, so now, uh, you know, in the roundhouse, that's how it works there, is you has to pass both houses um, in Congress in the roundhouse in New Mexico, just like any other state, just like at the federal level. So I could see our governor trying to do this stuff, and I'm, I'm curious as the case goes with Illinois because that relates to how we would have to fight it in New Mexico if it happened. If it gets to the Supreme Court, that would be even better because then it would codify that assault weapon wasn't a thing and basically wipe those things off the books and – aid in that Chevron deference that they couldn't change the definition of whatever gun they want or whatever a stock is versus whatever a pistol brace is, then we're in a better point and a better stance in the two-way. You know, as the government likes to do the government things and they like to get bigger and, and enforce their will on the people. Now, <clears throat> Along those lines, let's talk about what the government's been doing and what the media's been doing. Um, the shooting in, in Allen, Texas, okay, at, Dal at the Dallas Mall. What they have found out now is that that they're they're prophes they're pushing this narrative that this shooter was a Mexican neo Nazi. Now I've been Hispanic my entire life, and I didn't even think this was a thing. Now I've studied German history. And my friends jokingly have called me that, but they have never known one to be a real thing. And that's because neo-Nazis don't like Mexicans. They don't like Hispanics. Um, we are just now becoming white because we have family values that the left doesn't agree with. Um, we are very much uh, into our churches, which the left doesn't like when this stuff happened with uh, covid so they have a beef with Hispanics now, and we're now white nationalists as far as they're concerned. So what has actually come out of that story is that it is a Russian profile that they found. It was from a Russian website, a Russian uh, social media type thing. This person had zero followers um, for this profile. And they have tried to tie this to Tim Pool and Libs of TikTok because the, on that social media profile, there were some clips shared of both of those things. You know, this smacks of a setup. You know, I don't want to put on a conspiracy hat and say you pull an Alex Jones or nothing like that. Um, but this looks like a setup because also along with this, there was a manifesto that came out. And rather than... You know, we're still trying to get the manifesto from what happened at the Covenant shooting in uh, in Tennessee um, by a transgender shooter. Um, we still haven't got that, and there's political um, cases, or there's actually police cases now, where the police union for Nashville PD is actually petitioned to get this released. They're actually filing to get it released legally. Why would Nashville PD try to 
try to hide this. They wouldn't. Um, if you look at what happened with the Nashville shooting, as tragic as it is, the police response was textbook. It's the stuff that people are going to be showing and training forever. Those guys had, had stones of steel, man. When they went through there, they executed it. They didn't have all the information, but they were going to get the bad guy. And that's why it, why it burns so much for me to see these cops that do their job right every day, all day. And I have that heartburn of knowing that they're there, but knowing that if the ball drops, I can't count on them. They lost that. They still need to earn a lot of trust with me because of what happened during the COVID stuff. You know, um, put also what's been going on in Northwest New Mexico. If I mentioned this a couple times in a couple of episodes of this podcast where there was a, a shooting of a homeowner where the police had actually went to the wrong address. Now, more came out from that. Um, recently, I found out that this man had had his vehicle stolen or burglarized but a couple days before. So he was already on edge thinking somebody was doing something bad. Then to open the door and be nothing but light in your face, yeah, he may have not, may, maybe shouldn't have answered the door with a gun at that point. He maybe should have been more aware of his surroundings, meaning looked out the window just before he did the, anything. Um, that said, law enforcement still screwed up. The chief still needs to go because this is a repeated issue. Um, I mentioned that on that uh, on another podcast, the, the same podcast, or New Mexico Black Rifle Operators, but on another episode. So we're at that point that you have to start thinking. Are we really going to trust the state? And to be bluntly honest, I don't know that we can, but I still, there's, I guess, this little seed of staticism that's hoping that law, the law, the cases that are going out right now, side in our favor and redeem us and keep let us keep some of our freedom. Either way, free men don't ask permission. You do you. Stay strapped or get clapped. Like. Share, subscribe, be great.